By now, it's quite clear that the shift of AI processing towards the edge, that is inevitable. First up is Durga Malati, who is the Senior VP and General Manager for Technology Planning and Edge Solutions for Qualcomm. Durga. <laughs> Take it away. Thanks, Hina. Aloha, everyone. Wow. All right. Good to see everyone again. And uh, as both Ina and Don mentioned, we're going to be talking about AI. And you might be wondering, what can we possibly talk about AI even more than what we've already done in the last two days? Trust me, there's a little bit more. So over the next few minutes, we're going to, talk, we're going to have a few more uh, of our colleagues who will come on stage and talk a little bit through. But I want to actually set it into three different themes. By now, it's quite clear that the shift of AI processing towards the edge, that is inevitable. It's happening. You heard it from multiple people. From Mark Zuckerberg, to quote his own words, he said, running AI at the edge enhances response times, privacy, and power efficiency. You heard it from Sam Altman, who said we need to go beyond the capabilities of cloud and go into the AI processing power and cap into it into devices to bring out the best of life in AI. Now, there's a little bit more to it. We haven't talked much. But if you take a look at it from a developer perspective, the cost of AI processing, if you run it solely on the cloud, some of the recent studies indicate that it can take up to $4 per million tokens, whereas it's close to zero by the time you run it on devices. It means something. Other studies indicate that if you run AI inference solely in the cloud, about 3.5% of world's electricity generation can be consumed just by AI alone. That's quite something. But if you flip it around and take a look at the processing power that we have in devices that you and I carry in our pockets, Go back 25 years. For those of you who remember that event called Y2K, most people might have either forgotten or some of you might not have been born then. <laughs> but today's devices have more computing power than what we saw back then in desktops and even some of the smaller scale supercomputers. And at the same time, the energy consumption in these devices is less than what you see in an average LED light bulb. That's quite something, isn't it? And if you take a look at our Snapdragon platform portfolio, it's 30 times more efficient than what you see from an overall performance per watt compared to what you can run in a data center with generative AI today. Now, I've been talking for a little bit over here, but don't just take it from me. Hear it from a good friend, a colleague, and someone who is very well respected in academia, Andrew Ng. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Durga, for inviting me to speak at the Snapdragon Summit. I'm excited about on-device AI. While cloud-based AI works well and offers immense computational power and storage capacity, deploying large multimodal models at the edge also brings numerous advantages, including lower latency, real-time processing, reduced bandwidth requirements, and potentially enhanced privacy and security. For instance, when you use a social media app, the AI system that ranks or curates your feed typically runs in the cloud. This approach has its benefits, but also certain limitations, such as dependency on server availability. In contrast, on-device AI performs all computations directly on the user's device, which could be a smartphone or a laptop or something else. For example, when you take a picture with your smartphone, there's probably AI running locally on your phone to try to optimize or enhance that image. And this method prioritizes privacy and immediacy since the data doesn't have to leave your device. Modern devices often boast powerful heterogeneous processing units, including CPUs, GPUs, as well as neural processing units or NPUs, which are particularly adept at handling AI tasks, especially AI inference tasks. This capability enables devices to run complex AI workloads, especially inference workloads in real time, including generative AI for large language and vision models. The advantages of on-device AI go beyond smartphones. 
Devices like security cameras and laptops and cars and drones and AR, VR headsets in different sectors, including consumer, auto, industrial markets, all these sectors can harness this potential. And because there are billions of devices powered by Snapdragon processors, I think the scope for deploying AI models locally is very large. One of the most significant benefits of on-device AI is also its potential to enhance privacy. Because the data is processed locally, it remains entirely on your device. And this local processing can also support highly personalized experiences because the AI models can be tailored to your personal unique preferences. So I'm excited to announce a collaboration between Lani AI and Qualcomm focusing on advancing the ability of on-device AI. Using the Qualcomm AI Hub, which is a platform designed to streamline AI development, and also Landing AI's Landing Lens platform, we've established an end-to-end -end process that enables developers to deploy models quickly, starting from training data to getting a model up and running on a Snapdragon processor. We've collaborated with the Qualcomm AI Hub team to create a comprehensive integration workflow designed to streamline the prototyping and development of visual AI projects for our users. Once the model is prepared for deployment, it can be downloaded from Landing Lens and optimized using the AI Hub cloud service for deployment on embedded devices powered by Snapdragon and Qualcomm's platforms. It's been a pleasure and privilege to collaborate with Durga and the Qualcomm team. It was interesting to see Durga showcase devices running large generative models entirely on the smartphone, demonstrating AI assistance and image generation capabilities that all run locally. To empower developers to use on-device AI, Qualcomm and DeepLearning.ai had also recently launched a short course called Introduction to On-Device AI, taught by Qualcomm's Krishna Sridhar. You can find this course on the website DeepLearning.ai. This course teaches developers how to use the Qualcomm AI Hub to build, optimize, and deploy AI applications for devices powered by Snapdragon processors. In summary, I think on-device AI is an exciting and rapidly growing technology. We'll have many years ahead of exciting growth in on-device AI. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks, Andrew. Couldn't have explained the AI Hub better than him. That was quite awesome. Now, I want to touch upon a theme that maybe some of you are familiar with, but it's not always obvious. So let me actually talk through uh, the trend lines that are occurring in generative AI models. November 30th, 2022, that's when ChatGPT was introduced. And for a lot of us in the industry, of course, we've been working on AI, following AI, we kind of knew what was happening, but for the rest of the world, it was like a, an eye-opener. Spectacular processing that could actually give you human-like responses. It was quite something. Everyone was talking about it. That model that was used back then, GPT-3, was about 175 billion parameters, two years back. Sometime over the next one year, as you start taking a look at the different kinds of models that were coming in, the small models are getting more and more powerful. The performance of these models is a combination of, you measure it with a combination of language understanding, how will you do in grad school level understanding of sciences, even grade school level sciences for that matter. So there is something known as a quality of a model. Now, one year after that announcement, two years back, uh, Chad GPT, the 70 billion parameter models were already either on par or outperforming that 175 billion parameter model. Okay, that's something. Factor of three reduction, give or take. And if you take a look at Llama as an example, this year's Llama 3, 8 billion parameter models, outperforms last year's Llama 2, 70 billion parameter models. Now just think about it. 
we went from 175 billion parameters to 8 billion parameters in two years, and the quality of the models have only increased. If you put it all together, what does it mean, really? There is an equivalent of an AI law that's coming together here. The quality of AI models per parameter is constantly increasing. It's monotonically increasing. It also means that the same experience that you can get, that you think you can get, from a data center yesterday, that user experience, you can bring it to devices that you and I hold. That's quite something, a clear monotonic increase in terms of the user experience on device. Let's hear a little bit more on this topic from one of the key model developers, a friend and a colleague, Marjorie from Mistral. Hello everyone, I'm thrilled to represent Mistral AI, a company at the forefront of developing advanced generative AI models. At Mistral AI, our mission is clear. We want to make cutting-edge AI ubiquitous and accessible to all. To achieve this, we operate with fierce independence, a strong commitment to open, portable, and customizable solutions, and an unwavering focus on delivering the most advanced technology in a timely manner. Last September, we released our breakthrough Mistral 7B model, which demonstrated how a relatively small model with just 7 billion parameters could deliver exceptional reasoning and accuracy. Since then, the capabilities of large language models with 12 billion parameters or less have been rapidly advancing. In just over a year, Frontier AI models suitable for running on devices have matched or even surpassed the quality of those originally used in applications. Mistral AI is proud to be part of this new generation of smaller yet incredibly capable models. In fact, the quality per parameter of those models has improved by about 15 to 20 times in less than 18 months. Today, at this Snapdragon Summit event, we are excited to announce our partnership with Qualcomm and the optimization of our new model for Qualcomm technology. This model is designed to run on devices, started with those powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Elite mobile platform, as well as Snapdragon Cockpit Elite and Snapdragon Ride Elite for automotive applications. Our new Mistral 3B is compact yet powerful, with just 3 billion parameters, making it ideal for running within devices such as smartphones, vehicles, and more. This is Mistral's AI first premier commercial AI model designed specifically for on-device use. This model will enable devices manufacturers, software vendors, and digital service providers to deliver innovative experiences such as AI assistants and other applications that understand users' wants and needs thanks to the power of on-device AI. Running AI on the device offers numerous benefits, including enhanced privacy, immediacy, reliability, cost savings, and energy efficiency. Developers will be able to access Ministral 3B and other Mistral AI models via the Qualcomm AI Hub. This includes access to premium AI models, empowering developers and users to leverage our most sophisticated AI capabilities. Mistral models in the AI Hub will be optimized to run swiftly and efficiently on Snapdragon and Qualcomm platforms. Our collaboration with Qualcomm marks a significant step in bringing advanced Mistral AI capabilities directly to your devices, including phones, PCs, vehicles, and more. By harnessing the power of cutting-edge Snapdragon processors, innovators will be able to take advantage of our frontier models and create new and exciting AI applications with unparalleled performance and efficiency for users. I'm excited to work with you, Dorga, and everyone at Qualcomm to foster an open and collaborative ecosystem, giving users and businesses more choices to take advantage of the latest AI technologies and improve productivity, convenience, and assistance for everyone. Together, we have the opportunity to expand the reach of on-device AI to billions of devices and bring its benefits to people worldwide. I can't wait to see what applications developers and innovators will create using our groundbreaking Mistral AI models along the power of Snapdragon.
Thanks, Marjorie. That's quite an impressive thing. Now, Mistral is well known for its mixture of experts, models, and whatnot. Truly really excited to have this partnership with them. As we take a look ahead, we talked about models. We talked about why on-device AI is possible and what are the new things that it brings together. But there is one key ingredient as we see things moving forwards that will put it all together to create some really compelling use cases. It's called the AI agentic orchestrator. It's something that we briefly alluded to on day one. Cristiano talked about it. Now, I don't have the slide in the background, so I'm just going to use my hands to explain exactly what he said there. But I want to take a deep dive into it. If you think about it, for the longest period of time, for 15 years or so, we've been using our smartphones, let's use smartphones as an example, in a very tactile way. We all have the clutter of apps in our phone. We navigate through them, we touch it, and then we kind of either type in something or do something else with it. But that's how our user experience is defined as of today. What does it mean in the age of AI then? Well, first of all, these models are multimodal. They can take in any kind of an input. It doesn't have to be just text. It can be voice, can be images, can be video, or a combination therein. And by the time we go into automotive, we have several cameras feeding in, LiDAR, radar, and even IR sensors which are inside for digital cockpit. So multimodal models. But effectively, there's a lot of modalities that go into a device. So the first stop, the first interface for the end user happens to be this AI agent. The reason we call it as orchestration is because the agent is the one that orchestrates everything inside the device. It's the agent that has to first decide which models to use, which set of models. There's no one model that rules them all. There's no one model that can do every single use case. Usually it's a several set of models put together. So imagine in your device you have a catalog of models, you pick a subset of them for that specific task. That's job number one. Second, everyone is interested in a personalized AI experience. The agent taps into the local personal knowledge graph. Your preferences, your choices. You might like some things. You might like some kinds of restaurants. Maybe you only like restaurants which have a Yelp rating of five or four and above out of five. But all these preferences are kind of stored in a personal knowledge graph. It provides additional context, gives you a much more meaningful response. That's what the orchestrator taps into. That's job number two. Well, what happens to the apps then? The apps are still there. It's just that now you have plugins which f tap into those apps, fetch the information from there, put it all together, and then send the response back to the end user. The orchestrator in that sense taps into all the local assets. This data doesn't leave the device. That's where the privacy comes in. And occasionally, might have to go to the cloud to get some additional information. The bottom line is when you put it all together, the AI agent becomes that one single entity, which is the starting point that does everything else for you. So when you take a look at on-device AI capabilities, the rich set of models that we have with multiple modalities, multiple languages, and the orchestration that's put all of this together. The bottom line is AI is the new UI. With that, I'd like to welcome back Ina.